Earlier this week, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre blamed the current immigration crisis on a flow of migrants fleeing authoritarian regimes in Latin America and chastised Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for exploiting, quote, victims of communism by flying them to Martha's Vineyard. Let's watch. Let's remember, these folks are fleeing communism. When you think about Venezuela, what's going on in Venezuela, when you think about what's going on in Nicaragua, when you think about what's going on in Cuba, they are fleeing political persecution only to be used as a political pawn by the Florida governor. The way that we see it is alerting Fox News uh, and not city or state officials about a plan to abandon children fleeing communism on the side of the street is not burden sharing. That is not the definition that we see of burden sharing. It is a cruel, premeditated political stunt. That is not what they're, that is what they are doing. Uh, and so we're always, we're always happy to have conversations about ways to further improve border processing and we could be doing more. Joining us now to discuss his reaction is co-founder of the Revolutionary Blackout Network, Nick Cruz. Glad to have, us, have you with us, Nick. Uh, thank you for having me on. So I, we want to ask you about this question of how much communism is really to blame for the uh, immigrants who have chosen to leave Venezuela. Is, is the press secretary here uh, accurately describing the motives for um, so many people leaving the country? What's been going on there? Uh, my first reaction when I saw that, I was thinking, like, is that Sarah Huckabee Sanders? Uh, there's literally no difference there between the Biden administration messaging on this issue and Trump's messaging on this issue as well. There's no difference between a Jim Psaki or a Stephanie Gra uh, Graham or the Kareem Jean Pierre and the Sean Spicer. It's the same thing. The same way that U.S. foreign policy does not change between it doesn't change between presidents at all. And the idea you're going to blame communism instead of U.S. intervention, all three of those countries she named are countries that the United States have put sanctions on and interfere with. And this is kind of the same thing that Chomsky was saying as well. When you look at uh, Donald Trump and you look at Joe Biden, they mostly have uh, the same foreign policy. When it comes from seeking regime change in Venezuela, sponsoring genocide in Yemen, closing up with Saudi Arabia, funding and shielding the apartheid state of Israel, their hard life stance on Iran, and escalating with China. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. How can you blame an eco economic model for the failures and what happened to the citizens when you guys are illegally seizing their assets and not allowing them to sell their oil, oil on the international market? You had the Bank of England who had, they just had a, a sham trial where they said, we were like, oh, well, the $1 billion in gold that we stole from Venezuela, we had the right to do that. And it's, it's very telling that you see the same colonial powers, where it be the UK, Germany, and the United States, imposing their imperial conquest ambitions on the global south. They think they have the right to ruin the lives of Venezuelans, for example, and other countries because they reject their capitalist imperialist political agenda. The, the Venezuela people 100% knows what's going on. That's why Nicolas Maduro is stronger than ever. And this is another example of U.S. sanctions failing. They know the United States government is trying to take them down to install far right wing fascists that is mostly white, that is mostly bourgeoisie, that has been waging an active class war against Venezuela. When you look at Nicolas Maduro and the socialist revolution that started 20 years ago, that is mostly supported by black, indigenous, and poor people. And you have the white bourgeoisie who in charge of the media, who run all the, country, all the companies. They have been waging a class war backed by the United States, backed and supported by the United States. So it's the height of irony. The Democrats and Pierre, they complain about January 6th. If you look at the coups they sponsor in these countries that she, that she listed, the, that January 6th is child play compared, compared to what we do to Venezuela. We back Bolsonaro, who used to send death squads into Venezuela to assassinate and kill Bolson, uh, sorry, Badero uh, supporters. You had the hard, far-right fascist in Venezuela that was setting left-wing supporters of Nicolas Maduro on fire in the streets. These are the people that we support. So the idea that you're going to blame an eco economic model instead of our actions is ridiculous on face value. 
<laughs> okay. Look, I also oppose uh, many of the policies you just mentioned, the support for regime change. I would get rid of all these sanctions, too. But like, let's not gloss over the long history of corruption and political persecution by left-wing regimes in all of these countries as well, um, the, uh, under policies that have totally immiserated um, Cuba and Venezuela. It, it's on and on and on. I think it's Cuba. I think it's laughable to say oh, it's all Cuba. the U.S.'s fault. So Cuba has a higher life expectancy than the United States, a higher literacy rate, a much better health care system, despite the fact that the United States stole billions of dollars from them. So I'm asking you, Robbie, what's the excuse for the United States? Of course, there are always missteps that governments make, but the United <laughs> States is the richest empire that we've ever seen. One out of five children live in poverty in this country. If you look at Skid Row, I am asking you, what is the excuse for the United States? You have Venezuela, you have Cuba, you have all these countries that has been the victim of U.S. economic war that you guys call sanctions. Sanctions is seized warfare. You guys locked out Venezuela from the international market and you blame their economic system. We have the record amount of income inequality in this country. That is higher than the, the era of serfdom. So, Robbie, what's the excuse for capitalists? Who's sanctioning us? I don't think Skid Row, I mean, the, the, the collapse of American cities under progressive liberal democratic regimes is not really an indictment of it, the Trump United, policies the, the or capitalist policies. I mean, we, we get to the, well, the if it's the United so great in Cuba, why are they fleeing found here? They why are they crossing shark-infested waters? Well, well, Robbie, the point that Nick is making is that, it look, if you really think it's the economic systems in Cuba or Venezuela that are so destructive, why not lift sanctions, let them sink or fall exactly. on their own merit, I and then we can have a legitimate sanctions. conversation about whether communism fails. But what so many people on the left are frustrated with is that there has never been a communist or socialist government that has been allowed to freely test the model without the economic war, I love how you put it there, Nick, against them that basically rigs the game from the start. There's also never been a communist regime that doesn't imprison political dissenters, uh, cause we deliberate families or, or, or kill millions, or kill millions of people. Are you saying that we don't? Are you saying that we don't? I am not. Are you saying, are you saying that have, the communists don't? No, I've indicted. Country. I've indicted all of our policy. This is why we can never have honest conversations. But, but, I will criticize Robbie. everything that we do, everything no, the capitalist West governments do, and then you say, "Oh, so you're wait not criticizing minute, them?" I'm saying all the sanctions are wait, bad. Wait, wait a minute, and then guys. you turn around and excuse political repression under no. thug-like communist regimes we, that have killed we, millions and and starved millions. Look, it's ridiculous. Wait a minute, Robbie. It's, I, it's look, insulting. Look, look. Not, nobody here that we didn't bring up the political oppression because I think the observation that I think because you don't want to talk minute. about it you don't want to concede that it's true I'm literally trying to if you just let me get the sentence out here Robbie I think what Nick and I are pointing to is that political repression all kinds of authoritarian abuses those are things that exist around the world regardless of uh, political uh, orientation however those things are only brought <laughs> wait a minute those things are only brought up most the overwhelming majority of countries in this world are capitalist and most of the bad things that are happening in this world are happening under capitalism however capitalism is never blamed for the bad things Not that happen in the country Co everything that happens in a communist country, per Karine Jean-Pierre's statement, is attributed to communism. You're talking about per capita, America has the largest number of people incarcerated, living in cages, in jails, and anywhere else in the world. Not per capita, yes. but period. Despite not being anywhere near the largest country in the world, we have more people in jails than China. And you can say and dispute Chinese numbers and what's true and what's false and blah, 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 blah. But nobody can dispute the fact that we have an unprecedented and enormous mass incarceration problem. So this is not to excuse anything anywhere. But the, case, the point still stands. If you think that communism and socialism are such a unmitigated disaster, why is it that they have not been allowed to go ahead and run their own countries into the ground without American political interference? Yeah, we shouldn't have American political interference. I, again, I agree. I say it every time on this show, but they would not be so, thriving on their own and have never thrived on their own. So you well, realize that mm -hmm. U.S. state policy, when they, when they put Cuban embargo on there, was to destroy the economy because they didn't want to show an alternative to capitalism. If you capitalists are so confident that communism will fail, why won't you leave it alone, Robbie? Why, why, why won't you guys leave it alone? I mean, why I'm not in charge of the policies of the country, country man. I would, I would rescind but all can't of the blame sanctions the tomorrow. Well, Nick, and you me... can't you can't claim that these countries are also authoritarian because imagine what would happen. And you saw Democrats right now prosecuting January 6th protesters. You had the CIA literally sponsor death squads in Venezuela 
that try to overthrow the president. Do you know what the United States would do if we did the same thing? So be, get real, Robbie. This is how the real world works. There is no such thing as overt authoritarianism. It's countries upholding their laws. Laws are a thing, Robbie. You can't overthrow a president without consequence. Well, look, and I think that Robbie does, you know, appreciate that. And I, I, to his credit, would if magically we're president of the United States and maybe this will get in my vote. A lot of, a lot of would, things would be different. Would lift sanctions on countries like Venezuela, but it seems pretty clear that most people, um, frankly, regardless of political party in this country, most of our political leaders anyway, would not do the same. And I think it's a really interesting tell about their lack of confidence that all of their narratives around some of these countries would actually Including a lot of the, the migrants. So I, w I would absolutely support and have supported forever ending the Cuban embargo. But a lot of the Cuban migrants who come, one of the reasons we don't do that is there's tremendous political pressure on Florida politicians, on Florida Republicans from Cuban migrants who don't want to do that. Can you, can you explain why that is? Me. Please. Please, the man. Cuban bourgeoisie that has been waging a class war, the same people who fled because Fidel Castro wanted to share the resources with the poor, they don't want to lift the Cuban share embargo. The, go to the Cuba with and the ask poor the sounds like a little Cuban. bit of a euphemism. I, I, but. No, no, no. Go to Cuba and ask the average Cuban how they feel about the Cuban embargo. So these class traders that moved to Florida, their pain means nothing. Saying they didn't want to keep the Cuban embargo? Does that sound like people who care about the country, Robbie? Or, or people that support U.S. hegemony and capitalist uh, domination. Yeah, like, I, I, want, I want the uplifting of the global working class, and you guys rather destroy the global working class just so you guys can say zingers like communism never worked, that Cuba is failing. Leave these countries alone and allow them to thrive, and then we can talk. Until then, you have to explain to me, Robbie, what's the excuse for the United States for the massive poverty, despite the fact that we have no country sanctioning us? Where's the U.S. embargo, Robbie? But we got Skid Row. <laughs> We got people without health care. 60,000 Americans die each year because they don't have health care. 300,000 plus could have, say, could have lived through the COVID pandemic if we had health care. So what's the excuse for the United States? Who's the giant power that has got their boot on our neck? Our ruling class has failed. The central planning model of the United States has failed. So to, to point the finger at other systems and while you live in the empire that people are starving in is the height of cowardice. Mm, well, I, I mean, our ruling class is definitely failing the American people on a lot of the subjects you just mentioned, the uh, crime, uh, uh, drug addiction, et cetera. Um, so <laughs> but we, I'm, I'm sure we agree on that. And yeah, let's, uh, let's withdraw those, uh, those policies and see how it shakes out. Yeah. Well, look, I think we have to leave it there. But thank you so much for joining us, Nick. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Make sure you guys check me out on Revolutionary Blackout if you had a chance so you get some uh, real international reporting that can tell you the truth about the crimes of the U.S. empire. Much appreciated, Nick. We'll have more rising for you right after this.